Hi, I'm Tim. And I'm Nate. And we're here to talk turtles. Sea turtles. OK, let's talk about the first thing that everyone focuses on. I'll say turtle, you say shell. Exactly. If I were to wear this to a party, no one would have to guess at my costume. Hey, you're a turtle! The problem is, when people think of a turtle shell, they tend to think of this. To be sure, a sea turtle shell does provide them with some natural protection, but it doesn't make them invincible. For starters, there's one huge difference between land turtles and sea turtles. Most land or terrestrial turtles can withdraw inside their shell for protection. Not so with the sea turtle. They're built for a life spent full time in the water. And with flippers instead of legs, the limbs stay fixed outside of the shell. It's the same thing with sea turtles' heads, non-retractable. All this helps to make them great swimmers, but also makes them more vulnerable than their land-bound relatives. But sea turtles aren't just different from land turtles, they're also different from each other. You know, some folks think there's only one type of sea turtle, but that's not really true. You've got your loggerhead sea turtle, your leatherback sea turtles, and then there's the Ridleys. Kemp's Ridley sea turtle, Olive Ridley sea turtle. I'm kind of partial to the green sea turtle. You've got your Hawksbill sea turtle, your flatback sea turtle. Did I mention the loggerhead sea turtle? Yes. Yes, you did. Sea turtles do come in several different varieties with some important differences. You can kind of think of it as if you were choosing a character from a video game. OK, I'm going to select green sea turtle. If you look at the design of the shell, the top side of the shell is called a carapace. That's right. If you look at the carapace, you'll notice all these cool hexagonal plates. Those are called scoots. Correct. And the carapace with all those scoots creates a very hard shell. But check this out. This is the leatherback. This guy doesn't have scoots at all. Instead, he's got ridges. Also, the carapace is softer. Like leather. Now, if you were choosing your turtle for body armor, you'd probably pick the hard shell of the green sea turtle, right? Right. But not so fast. The reason the leatherback's carapace is different is that it's really thick and provides excellent insulation. This lets the leatherback travel to much colder waters than other sea turtles. And the leatherback is the largest of all the sea turtles. They can get as big as 70 inches, around 2,000 pounds. But then look at this. The olive ridleys, they're the smallest of the sea turtles. Only about 20 to 30 inches and around 100 pounds. Huge difference there. Also, each of the sea turtle species has their own unique adaptations. Like the hawksbill turtle. This guy's got a narrow head and a hawk-like beak that he uses for picking food like sponges from narrow crevices and coral reefs. That's a very cool profile. Hey, just thinking, we're talking a lot about the differences. We probably ought to talk about what sea turtles have in common. You know what that means. Yeah, it's time to go prehistoric. Toys, Tim, really? Hey, come on, it works. Scientists believe that modern sea turtles came from Martian habiting ancestors from the late Triassic period. The largest was around 6,000 pounds. Over the years, these cold-blooded, hard-shelled reptiles shrunk down in size and became the sea turtles that we know and love today. And here they are, the modern sea turtles. The bones in their flippers are a lot like what you'd find in your own hand. Just imagine if your hand was turned into a flipper. There's only one or two claws on each front flipper. And it's the front flippers that provide all the swimming power. The hind flippers are much shorter. They act like rudders, allowing the animal to swim in the desired direction. And the hind flippers are very good for digging in the sand, which is very useful when nesting season comes around. 41,000, 42,000, 43,000, 44. <sighs> the average human can hold their breath for only about a minute. Sea turtles can hold their breath for hours. It's not just that sea turtles can hold their breath a long time. As cold-blooded animals, they can actually slow their metabolic rate. Their heart rate slows to conserve oxygen so they can stay underwater longer. Some sea turtles can actually hibernate through winter underwater. 
What little oxygen they do need comes directly from the water. Dissolved oxygen taken directly through their skin. Enough about sea turtles. Tim, you gotta work on your lung capacity. Ready, go! One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, 